Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today we're going to be discussing dialysis and the state of California. Now, this story is like a soap opera. It has twists and turns and more twists and turns and hold on to your hats because we're going for a ride. Okay, so as many of you know, the dialysis business is heavily dominated in America by two companies, DaVita and Fresenius. And they're both publicly traded. DaVita is an American company and uh, Fresenius is actually a German company. Now, they, the, between the two of them have 4,900 dialysis centers in America, which is 70% of the dialysis market in America. They dialyze about 400,000 Americans a year. Okay, what does this have to do with the state of California? Last November, the states of Cal the residents of California voted for what's called Proposition 8, which was, to a certain extent, brought about by the SEIU, so the Service Employees International Union, because they wanted to unionize the workers in dialysis centers. Now, depending upon which side you're on, was it about unionization? Was it not about unionization? Well, there's multiple sides to that story. But the dialysis companies were against Proposition 8. And they spent, DaVita spent $61 million trying to defeat Proposition 8. And Fresenius spent $28 million trying to defeat Pro uh, Proposition 8. And along with some other contributors, there was over $100 million in a state ballot proposition regarding unionization of dialysis workers. That seems kind of odd. Now, all of this reporting is courtesy of the LA Times, which had a number of articles in the fall of 2018. And uh, one of the articles that a lot of this data comes from is actually from October 11th on 2018, and I will leave the link in the show notes. But please go to those LA Times articles. They are fantastic. Okay, great. So there's a lot of money going around. Proposition 8 is not passed by, by the voters. Okay, so the dialysis companies prevailed, and the SEIU did not prevail. Okay, now... Let's go into a little bit more detail about DaVita. Okay, DaVita has $10 billion of revenue, of which they make about $1.8 billion of profit off of that. So at the end of the day, the $61 million that they spent on Proposition 8 is really kind of a drop in the bucket compared to that $1.8 billion in profit that they made. Okay, to put that into perspective, DaVita is 179 on the Fortune 500 list. What does that mean? That means DaVita is bigger than CBS. DaVita is bigger than Goodyear Tires. DaVita is bigger than Marsh McLennan, the large insurance company Mercer M&A Brokerages, right? So everybody in the insurance world is like, Marsh Mac is huge, right? Marsh Mac, Marsh Mac is nothing compared to the size of DaVita dialysis for 400,000 people. Okay, why is that? Okay, now we're going to get into dialysis reimbursement. Okay, so dialysis has to be performed approximately three times a week for people that are in uh, end-stage renal disease. Okay, typically it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And typically the facilities are closed on Sundays. Uh, okay, great. So, Medicare reimburses about $250 per treatment per session, right? So you're talking, if you do the math on that, it's like, what, $750 a week, then two weeks in a year, so it comes out to like $38,000 a year. Okay, guess what? The Vita Fresenius, most of these facilities are out of network with the insurance carriers. They choose not to participate in the network. Therefore, they get reimbursed out of network rates of $2,000 to $4,500 per session. Look at that, that's over 10 times more the Medicare rate. We're talking, $300,000 plus per year versus $38,000 per year, okay? So there's tremendous incentive financially for DaVita and Fresenius and all these other dialysis firms to have their patients not be Medicare patients, but rather to have them be on commercial insurance. Now, the rules for Medicare were changed a long time ago to say that once you had end-stage renal disease for a certain amount of time, it's like a year or two years, I mean, it kind of varies, depends upon um, how the, the law is enacted, interpreted, et cetera, et cetera. But after an amount of time, then people then are considered permanently disabled, and then they qualify for Medicare, even under the age of 65. Okay, great, the Medicare would start paying. Okay, however, it obviously is in the dialysis company's best interest to keep them off of Medicare and on 
their commercial insurance because they make a boatload more money. Okay, now, look what happens. Aetna sues DeVita for um, steering their patients or their employee members to commercial insurance versus getting on Medicare. And, and how did they do this? Did they do it directly? No. They did it through something called the American Kidney Fund, which is a nonprofit organization. Guess what they do? They pay the premiums of people that are on dialysis. Right? So when people go on, whether it be you know, Obamacare or let's say they're on COBRA or even on their commercial insurance plan, if they have financial hardships from the premiums, right? And if you've got to pay a premium, I mean, it likely could be like $28,000 for a family of four, right? So who can afford that? So guess where the American Kidney Fund got their money? They got it from DeVita and Fresenius. Look at that, 78% of the American Kidney Fund's budget $200 million was from the dialysis companies themselves. So the dialysis companies would give the money to the American Kidney Fund. The American Kidney Fund would then pay the premium for the, uh, the patients so that they could pay their uh, commercial insurance premium so they could then get higher reimbursement from commercial insurance as opposed to being on Medicare. Okay, now the uh, insurance companies actually wanted to then block this from happening. And guess what? A judge ruled in their favor, but then another judge blocked that other judge's decision. And guess where it stands now? It's up in the air. We don't know. We don't have a decision. And so as a result of that non-decision, this still goes on to this day. So, why am I telling you this? The reason I am telling you this is because Dialysis claims are incredibly expensive for employers, and oftentimes for partially self-funded employers, these dialysis folks will get lasered out. In other words, oftentimes they'll get pulled out of their stop-loss coverage in order to keep their stop-loss premiums down. So the employer ends up footing the bill for a lot of this. Now, is this legal? Is this illegal? Should dialysis uh, facilities be unionized? Should they not be unionized? That's not the point of this discussion today. The point of this discussion today is to know Again, that there are large groups of people with a lot of money who are particularly strategizing in ways that increase employer health care costs. And that's the only point I want to make today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.